I want to introduce our station to you. It's a first, there are a lot of research program uh, are going uh, at the station, but I think you may interest uh, in some of our program and the service. First, we have some like the free uh, public service. That's the first you will see on the screen. That's the insect information office and the plant disease information office that's that I'm working in uh, and also soil testing. Uh, last, uh, since last, maybe about maybe three years ago and we started doing the, the tick testing too. So for the tick, tick identification and also that's the Lyme disease test. So all these services are free. So feel free to contact us and send us samples to solve these issues. So I'm working in the plant disease information office. I, by the way, so uh, at, in the winter, we have another uh, lab. So that's called the Valley Laboratory. Uh, the, in winter, you can use that uh, office too. So if you visit our webpage, you will find all this information. Actually, this uh, web page is the Plant Disease Information Office. So in the, uh, if you visit our, this uh, page, you will find some information first. You will find that the sample submission because we handle plant disease problems. If you grow vegetables and the flowers or some shrubs, uh, any kind of plants or even that's like the house plants. If you have any issues like the insect or disease problems, you can send us samples. You can find that information how you can send us samples, like the, the physical samples and also the, uh, some images by email. Uh, and also you can call us too. And also that's the second part you are find called publications. Publication include about over a hundred different fact sheets about the plant health issues. So you will find some fact sheet in there. Uh, and the third part is what we call this what's new. So we always update very hot topic in gardening. So you will find some information, what kind of disease problem going on in gardens. So we always update maybe once or twice a month. Like the very interesting part you may find we call it the image gallery and the third portion I put a lot of disease uh, images uh, in that website, over maybe about 80. So under each image, you will find that it's a related fact sheet. We link that fact sheet to. So it's all this information you can find. It's very useful for gardening. So I just introduced this our station and uh, my office. Okay. So let's talk about the house plants. I think that you all love house, house plants. So me too. So I have a lot of house plants in my office and also in my home too. So why we grow house plants? So that's the first, that's a good feeling. I want to put this one first. So especially like this last maybe year. So we have this pandemic. So a lot of people just stay inside. It's hard to go out and doing the social. So it's a plant, if you grow indoors, you can get a good feeling, feelings. So you can see like the, if you put some plants in the middle of the house or um, by the wall and the, by the window. So it's very attractive. So you will look at very, uh, have some good feelings. And also it's a uh, lifestyle is good. So just like in my office, I grow a lot of house plants. This is purpose might be some, air, uh, good air quality, but most important thing, let, let me just active. Because I always sit in my, by my desk, so it's a tired, so I need to walk, stand up. How I can stand up? I need to take care of my plants. So I need to look at them, what kind of the issues, do I need to water them, do I need to prune them? So it's a very good, like, like the healthy uh, lifestyles. So. And also you can just make some good friend, new friends or old friends. You can share some house plant with your friends. You can get some new plants from your friends. So, and also when you have this kind of the good feeling, uh, when you're working on your house plants, that's a good rest in, at night too. 
and the most important thing is grow house, uh, house plants. You can reduce a lot of the chemicals, bad chemicals indoors. So when this uh, any kind of the house built, uh, so there are a lot of chemicals in there, like the um, ceilings and then like the wood materials, furnitures and the, like the floors, the carpet, a lot of chemicals coming out from there. So you can see uh, on the left side, I list some chemicals. I don't want to read that's all chemical names, but the Im important things I want to mention that's about the 1980s. So NASA scientists did some experiment because they, they stay in the, like the sealed container. Uh, so it's a long time, a uh, lot of chemicals in the, that's a, uh, in, inside too. So they did some experiments using some plants growing in the uh, space and then to measure that the different kind of chemicals, how much they left. So they use some kind of the sealed container and then put the chemicals in there and then put some plants. And then they leave some control. Control that means no plants, only that's the chemicals in this. Uh, sealed container. So you can see from that's a table. So that's a lot of different kinds of plants can reduce these chemicals from that to the co container. So you can see about maybe the over 50%, sometimes almost 90% of the chemicals can be reduced from this, uh, from this plant. So at the bottom, you can see even just no plants, some soil can get rid of some chemicals too. At the bottom, even the soil control can see about 20% reduced that's a bad chemicals. So that's a, a very good, that's a, the, uh, uh, well, the air purifier. But how the, those plants can purify that's the air and get rid of that's a bad chemicals. First part is the leaves. Leaf can take in a lot of the, uh, chemicals. So like the, let's say in the circle on the right side, that's the, they can take in and, <clears throat> and also from the roots too. So from the root system, they absorb those chemicals. And also uh, on the root zone, we call that the reservoirs, a lot of the microorganisms growing or living in the soil. Those microorganisms also they can take in is a lot of the chemicals, and then they can transfer that and also that uh, metabolize those chemicals and the stored in the uh, plants or in the soil. So in that way, can reduce the uh, chemi bad chemicals from the air for all from the indoors conditions. For the selection of the house plants, or we call the choose a house plant. So this is some factors we need to consider. First, that's a very important part is the conditions. What kind of condition we have? Especially very important part is the light. So, you know, uh, all these plants, they need a the light. But so normally indoor conditions, this is the light conditions where be the different. Uh, between the different houses. So we need to uh, look at what kind of the light conditions we have. Temperatures that look like they're not very critical because it's a normally indoor condition temperature. So normally very uh, in the range of the for plant growing. So it's not critical, but it's a light condition is a very important part. And, and also that's a space too, how much space we have. And also uh, choose the, house plants depend on what kind of the parts you want. Do you want just the green leaves or maybe you want some colorful flowers? So it depend on your choice. Some people like the very green, big leaves, so they some people like that. So it depend on uh, your favorite. For the light conditions, we group it the three uh, categories. So that's the first, so that's the highlight and the medium light and the low light. So this is just depend on the, how close to the window, how much light the, we can get, the plant can get. So that's a highlight we uh, categorize in that's the, about maybe uh, less than four feet from the window, just close to the window, 
about four feet. So that's a very good light condition. So that doesn't look like that's the uh, highest light conditions nearby the window. And also depend on the which direction it's a, a window is. So normally that's a source west or source east, that's the good light conditions. Medium light, we, we mentioned that between that's a four to eight feet from that's the east and the source. And also that's the uh, far away, the, like the over 80 feet from the window and the northern side of the window that we call the low light. But even at, in the, uh, at the low light condition, still we can grow some house plant. So, so that's, but we need to know what kind of light condition we have and then to that's the, right plants for that area. And also when you buy any kind of the, that's the uh, house plants, you will find that the tags. Look at the tag. Normally and on the tag, they mention what kind of light, they, this kind of plants they need. Just like at the bottom this picture. So just read that part. And the one, uh, when we buy that the plant, so, or maybe your friend gave you some plants. So we need to look at that plant. So that's a look like on the upper picture, we can see that's a two plants. On the left part, a uh, left plants, you can see that there's not too many roots growing up. And also that's a smaller stunted and the right plant look healthy. So that means even that's the same size or maybe in the same um, area, you, you get that's a two plant where be the totally different. One might be the healthy, one might be a little bit the sick. So you need to look at that the plant conditions to check, get this very good, uh, healthy uh, plant. And also check for disease or insect problems too. Don't bring any kind of the bad things to your house. So when you buy, or even your friends gave you. So because sometimes your friends may, may not know that, realize that, but you need to check that very carefully. And also important thing to when you get a new plant from outside, so you know, maybe, maybe from nurseries or greenhouses, you need to think about this a totally different conditions. So indoor house, uh, in just like a house, very low light condition. But on the right uh, bottom picture, you can see when they sell that in the nursery or greenhouse, they have very bright light, although indoors, but they still have bright light. But when it, those kind of plants, after you bought that and then put in your house, that's what we call that called the shock because that's the conditions change too much. So from the bright light to the low light conditions, we call that a shock. So we need to get that new plant and then gradually let this plant adapt to that new conditions. So that's a very important, take time. So when you buy in the spring, so from this kind of the large greenhouse or nurseries, try to put outdoors, but not under the direct sun. So it might be on the north side and the shade the conditions, but still that's the more light compared to the indoors. So, and the keep that outdoors, uh, but the shade the conditions and then gradually put, if you want put indoors, so just put indoors. Otherwise it just keep outdoor during the season and then in the fall, take it. So, and then this way you can let this plant adapt to that's the new conditions. And also another important thing you need to remember when you buy any kind of new plants from nursery or greenhouse, you need to wash that to the pots because in commercial nurseries or greenhouse, they use a lot of the fertilizers. So that means a lot of the salt accumulated in the pot or in the potting mix. So when you buy any kind of bring in any new plants, put in the kitchen sink and then let it slowly run the water, wash off all that the extra chemicals. If you want to fertilize that, maybe in the later, so you can add your own fertilizers. But before that, you need to wash off that because a lot of the fertilizers like the chemicals accumulate in there can change the soil pH, the soil pH and also that's the kill that's the root system. And also that's the people always asking so people call me just how when I water my plants and then how I water my plant. 
So this is depend on different kind of conditions. So this is no any uh, good answer to give this individual uh, questions. So first it depends on the size of the plant and also the containers. So this is first question is just um, forget that. And then the second question, how to determine when I need to plant, uh, water my plant. So check the soil. So people just uh, try to check. Sometimes they mentioned, I just put the finger in the soil, it feel dry, and then I water that. But you need to remember how much, how deep your finger can put in the pot. If that's a pot, it may be 10 inches. I don't know how long your finger is, so but maybe that's two inches, how deep. So that's the very important thing. Is so that's the, about maybe two thirds. Two thirds of the bottom soil get dry. So start to dry it, you need to water that. So, I normally check that the water conditions in the mix. I just try to live. That's a very easy way to do that. Sometimes people tell me that they use little chopsticks put in there and then if you feel that a little bit wet inside, they can tell, but that's a good way too. But for me, that's an easy one, an easy way, just live. Each Parts might be different because the soil mix will be the different weight and then maybe the part uh, quality is different. But I think that your plants, you remember which plants is uh, what's the weight. So every time when you live to that, you can tell they need the water or not. So, and also people using that sort of kind of the moisture matter. So it's a good, but I don't trust that because <laughs> I remember one time people of uh, one person, uh, one customer bring in that's a moisture matter. Actually, that doesn't work. I think uh, he always tell me, I just based on that's the matter, tell me when I water that. But I just did the experiment uh, with him. So he mentioned, oh, yeah, it's the wrong. So this is sometimes it's a good, but not always trust that. So, but it's the weight. It's a very uh, good way to do that. This is the, just my experience. And the how to water. So I normally just, mm, my wife and I always have some different opinions. My wife always just leave to one small cup every day, just goes through water that's once, almost once a day, or maybe sometime twice, depending on how much wa water she has. So she always water a little bit, little bit each time. I normally suggest that the water that when the plant, uh, when the pot is need that water. So depend on different kind of plants. If you want water, just to try to soak the soil completely. So that means that's an easy way to do that. Just to put that pot in the sink and slowly water that. Let the soil make a uh, soil mix of absorb the so uh, water completely, whole mix. If you water that's maybe one minute, some although that's the water can go through the bottom of the pots, but not whole soil get moist because it's so dry they can ab absorb that's the whole water. Slowly water that, let the water go through that's the bottom draining hole. So that's the way to do that. But sometimes before you water that, even just try to um, using a small, large container, uh, put the water just aside, let the, the water maybe uh, turn to the let's say, room temperature because sometimes it's water so cold. And also time of uh, little watering. So this is depend on the summertime, maybe the, they grow fast, they need more water, but in the, during the winter time, they may need a smaller amount of the water. But a, uh, in, in this area, we normally have uh, a lot of heating system um, going. So that's very dry. We need to water that during the winter time too. Not to just don't water that during the winter. I don't want to say that, so. Okay, temperature, I don't want to mention too much, but this, uh, I just want to men mention that one point. Some plants, if you want to get some bloom, uh, flowers or blooming, they need like a little bit lower temperature trigger that. So just remember, this depends on different kinds of plants. So I just want to mention that. Okay, for the fertilizing. So this is just a, 
two points. Let's the first, fertilize your house plants when the plants active growing. So that's the important point. And the, during the winter time, in general, don't need to add uh, fertilizers, but for some plants, they still growing very well during the winter time, they need water too. So that means one uh, measurement just depend on when they are active growing. So that's the time to you, you fertilize that. But when this plant is very sick, and also when you just transplant it or maybe divide it, don't try to fertilize that because a lot of the wound get stressed. They need to um, recover from the stress and then can take out fertilizers. Yeah, so for fertilizers, a lot of the different kinds of fertilizers in the market, just to see uh, what kind of fertilizer fit uh, to your plants and then uh, good for your plants. So I just went to mention, mention that's the one, that's for the orchid. The orchid normally need for special fertilizer, very light fertilizers. So if you have orchid in your house, I think you may need to buy this special uh, fertilizers for this orchid. So in the, some other house plants, uh, you may use different, but this are the two different kinds of the uh, uh, chemicals. One is for nitrogen. So I think that you all know that that's just for green leaves growth. But if you want more flowers, it's a phosphorus. So that means that's the second number. It's a normally NPK. It's the second number is the phosphorus. So when you buy or look at that the labels, you will see different three numbers. Just check which number you want higher, which you do want green or let more flowers. And the how to fertilizer depend on what kind of formula uh, for, uh, fertilizer you buy. Some little uh, liquid ones, so normally just add water and then when you water that, uh, using that the fertilizers. Some little like the pellets or spike might be directly put in the pot. Yeah, just like a bottom two pictures. So you can see some just the pellets, very easy. But just remember, if you use that the um, liquid fertilizers because it's a fast releasing, so you may fertilize more often compared to that the slow releasing pellets or spikes. So that's the different type. So different kind of method you can use. But that's the rule of some. This is the for, uh, always read the labels, uh, follow the directions. And uh, during the winter time, it's the care, uh, take care of the house plants. The important thing is to increase the humidity. So most of the house plants are to the, in tropic, uh, in the tropical area in the forest. So they need a little bit higher temperature and the high humidity too. But when during the winter time, that's the heating system is on. So it's always very dry. So we need some extra moist for these plants. So different ways we, we, we can increase uh, get to the, to the high humidity. So sometimes they're using this small like the tree, they put some sand or like the gravels underneath and then fill that water. So that means just avoid that the water touch the bottom of the pots, but still can increase the humidity in that local area. And also you can use it as a small humidifier, but this bit more expensive and using the electricity on the left bottom. And also that's the easy way I normally do, such as using small sprayer, just to keep that spray on the desk. So if you, when you, stand up, just take that one, spray on the leaves and they look like the fresh and also you can make you act more active too. And also cleaning that is also important. Too. So just like take, uh, we take showers every day. So plants also need to clean because a lot of dust cover the surface, they cannot breathe. The uh, plant also need to breathe but because a lot of the stoma on the surface, underneath or lower up, upper upper surface, they need to breathe, get to the air, uh, uh, carbon dioxide in and then oxygen out. So they need to get it clean. So you can use that as sponge or brush, you can do. 
Uh, and also it's an easy way. And the, for the small leaves, it's a hard to use. That's a sponge or brush. Just to take that to plants uh, in, 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 the, in the shower, give the good shower on the, just like the, on the left uh, bottom picture. So you can see that it's a very good shower. So this can clean that's a leaf surface and also get rid of a lot of insect problems too like mites or it's a lot of the aphids, so you can get rid of insect problems. Some plants, they grow very fast, especially the root system. So we need to repot that. So how we, how we need to, uh, when we need to repot them. So just like the right picture, so you can see a lot of the roots growing out. That means that there's no space for root growth. So this is time to get repot. So before you repot that, uh, before you uh, get the new pot, so try to prune that off. That's a lot of the old roots. Get rid of all, all the roots. You can get that to the large pot or same pot, same size of the pot. I will mention that to uh, how uh, we repot that. So. For, uh, and also the important thing is what kind of the pots you want to use. So I think the diff uh, different types of pots. First on the top, so the bottom maybe 34, 40 years ago, people always using like a clay pot. At that time, that's the most common ones. Actually, that's a very good because that can make that air uh, movement inside out. And also that's the keep that the moist uh, very evenly. But it's the bad part is so that's the very um, easy to broken, and also that's a lot of the salt staining on the upper. You can see that's the white on the salt uh, stay on the outside. You can see a very uh, not good appearance on there. So, and the second uh, type of the parts that's the ceramic so that's a very nice looking in, in the middle uh, in the middle that's a picture you can see very nice looking appearance people always like that but most of the time those kind of the pots they don't have that's a draining hole just make sure mm, that's a draining hole or not so when people call in i always asking so people people always ask, my house plants are dying so first you need to check if there is a draining hole at the bottom or not. Sometimes they just directly put the house plant in that's like the ceramic pot and then water that maybe, I don't want to water too much once in two weeks, but still it's a too much because no extra water can run out. So that's the keep, that's the lower part, it's always wet. So we call the wet feet. This can kill the plant. And the, Third uh, type of the pot that uh, we call plastic pots. So right now there's a lot of people use that and the, sometimes it can mimic that's a kind of the ceramic pot. So on the bottom picture, right? You can see very nice appearance too. So I like this kind and also very light and the, there's different colors, different shapes. I like this kind of the pot. And the packing mix, uh, normally people buy that. You, 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 can make, uh, you can mix that. But the one point, uh, one thing I, I want to mention that's uh, don't try to use garden soil. Don't put any soil in your uh, house plant pot. Okay, so how to repot? So normally when you repot that, so you can get that a large pot or using the same pot. If you want to use the same pot, just try to cut of the old roots. If you want to get that large pot, maybe a one or two inches larger compared to the original one. So first take that out and then cut some old roots and then find the large pot put in. So that's a very easy to do that, but it just depends on how much roots you can see from the surface. And uh, people always want that to propagate because sometimes they uh, want to share uh, some new plants with uh, friends or maybe get more plants in your house. So there's a different ways we can propagate our house plant. That's the first, that's the easy way to do that to divide, divide the plant. So 
like the very some plants, it's very easy to do that. Like the peace lilies, just divide it. This maybe one big part, so like maybe about uh, six inches or the ten inches. You can divide maybe to six, even ten. So this is but small. Take maybe two or three years, get the large enough, uh, good looking uh, plant. And also some. Uh, like the we call uh, small babies can coming out like the spider uh, little plants. Uh, so you can see that's a small baby. So you can cut that and directly put in a small new part. They can grow out very easily. So it's a dividing and then uh, using that to the roots uh, dividing and also that to the offspring uh, divide, uh, cuttings. You can do that. A uh, little bit difficult. Um, way to do that is just using the cutting. You can cut it a stem and also sometimes you, you can tender stems and the uh, woody stems. So I did some better cuttings. Uh, I will show you some images at the uh, next few slides. But when you make this cuttings, even tender or woody uh, stems, uh, maybe you, you need like the root hormone, you can dip and then put in, uh, uh, directly put in the soil. Uh, like the some um, some plants are very easy to uh, like the using small leaf cuttings or like the bud cuttings like the J plants or snake plants and also called the leaf budding uh, cuttings like the philodendron and also that's the portho and also English ivy because that's the each that's the node they can grow out new roots. So that means if you cut a small piece of the stem, have maybe three or four leaf nodes, those stems, some they can grow out roots and then some they can grow out new shoots. So that's a very easy way to do that. So I will show you some uh, images later. And also layering. So some like the woody plant, you don't want it to cut and then put in the soil. You can directly, we call it the layering. So just to remove, uh, just from this picture, we can see that the, on the top, that's the first, just to remove uh, some uh, old uh, portion, maybe three, four, five leaves in the middle. And then using small knife, make some wounds on the stems. That can stimulate that the stem grow out roots. So just after you wound that to the stem and then put some like the um, plastic, uh, like the hole that's the bottom and then fix the waste some kind of the uh, putting mix and then seal that just like in the middle. If you keep that maybe three, four weeks or even a month, you will see some roots growing out inside that the uh, putting mix in the like the small like the plastic inside, plastic sheet inside. When you, the, when you see that a lot of roots already grow out and then you can cut the bottom. You directly put that to the rooted stems, directly put in the pot. You will get new plants and also you can keep all the plants. So that means you, from the one, you can get two plants. Yeah, some, mm, some common problems you will see on the house plants, very common one we call the, the salt damage. Just like I mentioned before. So when you add a lot of fertilizer, accumulate the chemicals uh, in the uh, soil mix, they showing that the soil damage. On the uh, upper picture, you can see at the tape, you can see that's a dark browning, always showing that the tape. And on the right, so that's what we call the burning. Burning can be happen, might be the heat or directly strong sun, and also that's the cold. So I think that two, uh, last week, someone called in, uh, a lady called in. So my plants look like the burned. And then after we talked maybe about 10 minutes, I finally, I got the information because she just got that's a new plant from the friend for a gift. That's about two weeks ago. At that time, it's very cold. So that means maybe at the 10, degree or maybe the one degree outdoors, just a few seconds from your car to the front of your door, that can burn the leaves too. So this is very strong wind and the cold temperature can burn the leaves. And the wilting. When you see it at the plant house plants are showing the wilting, check two parts. Might be that's too much water 
or might be the too little water. So if that's a drought, so when you water that, they can recover. But if that's a too much water, get the root rot, even you water that, they cannot come back. So you can you can check that. And a lot of the insect problems you may see uh, on the house plants. That's the first, like the aphids, you will see some like the small, like the creatures that are moving underneath or upper, uh, underneath or upper leaf surface, like the aphids on the left. And also that's a mealybug. Mealybug is a very common tool. It will like the cottony materials on the leaf surface or on the stems too. And also mites, spider mites, and the scales. Scales on leaves, and sometimes they can grow in on woody stem tissues too, the scales. So a lot of the like the in, uh, con, uh, like the materials in the controlled insects, uh, that's the, if you see a lot of the fungal net, like the small flies, that's a, a flying in, in, in house might be the uh, fungal uh, fungus net. Uh, you can buy some the yellow stick, like this kind of on the left the bottom. You can see the yellow stick parts. So just put in the parts. They can check a lot of the uh, fungus net. And also for the mealybug. So that's an easy way to do that. Just using that to the, like the cotton, cotton ball, and then using that the alcohol, dip that, and then just remove that the white like that's the uh, cottony materials out. And also some scales or mites, you can use like the insect side soap. So you can use that just to control those insect problems. Uh, not too many disease problems uh, on the house plant, but you may see uh, like the powder mildew on the left picture. You can see like the white mold on the surface. So this is the powdery mildew, it's a fungal disease. It's a very difficult control. Although you can spray some fungicide, you can reduce, but you can not complete get rid of that. So that's a very difficult. Uh, that's like the African violet. If you see this kind of the fungus, I don't want to keep that. So that's my suggestion. And on the right, so you will see some like the fungal leaf spot. Although it's a fungal disease, but it's very locally infected. If you catch it up very early and you just remove that infected leaves and then keep the rest of the new leaves healthy, even you don't spray any fungicide. So this will depend on what kind of problems. Just like I mentioned, if you have any questions, just maybe call me or send me some images, I can help you with that. And then I can just go through some that's the very common house plants we grow in indoors. Like the Chinese evergreens, it's a very uh, good that house plant for the low light conditions. Even that on the uh, uh, northern side of the window or this low light uh, indoor conditions, you can grow that one. It's a very uh, nice looking, that's, but it's a foliar, not flower uh, plants. Uh, this is a peace lily, so that's a very easy grow in the very top, but sometimes don't let them dry too much. So actually this is my plant. So I kept the too dry, so you can see the lower part, a little bit like the drooping and the wilting. Uh, it's a very tough. In this kind of plant, they can tolerate that's a wet condition and also a little bit dry condition, uh, low light. But if you want to get that's a white flowers coming out, you need a give this plant more light. So just close to the window, more light, you can stimulate, you can stimulate them, get the flowers. Yeah, this is a phyllodendron. So this is a lot of different kind of different, might be the uh, over a hundred different species of phyllodendrons. I have two right now. This is the, on the left, this is a very shiny, uh, variegated leaves. Uh, this is uh, called the uh, pink uh, princess. I like this one, but this one come out like a little bit brown color. And then some tissues are turning that's like very pink, whitish pink color, I like that. On the right, this is like the vine type, that's the philodendron. Let's grow very tall, but you can reduce that like a vine. You can just pick, put a pole, actually there's a small poles on there. So you can reduce the size, just let the vine 
turn around, you can get very compact, yet very nice looking. I like that's a leaf color and the shape. That's a very tolerant to, to actually that's at the corner of that's my house. So not too much light. So the still that's a grow very nicely. And those are begonia. Begonia, actually, that's the, you can keep that outdoor plant and also you can keep that the indoor plant. On the right, so I normally keep that plant always indoors. So this is very nice looking, that's a foliar uh, color and the shape. You can move this outside, but if you look at the closely in the middle, if I <laughs> point to that one, actually that's the burn that two years ago. There's a leaf still hanging on there. That's the old, my wife always blame me every day. That's <laughs> because I take this outside, get a very uh, windy condition and strong light to burn the leaves. So just remember that if you want to take the some plants out gradually from the indoor and the, the shaded condition and a bit like the east side, uh, uh, you can get to the morning sun, it's okay, but not afternoon sun. On the left picture on the bottom, actually that's the begonia, that's the hanging basket. Actually not the house plant, but I always keep indoors uh, during the winter time and then take this out for the hanging basket. On the left picture, actually this one that I made the cuttings. I just, uh, when I take in in the fall and the cut some uh, taller ones, put the cuttings in the small, uh, like the cups, put in the water and maybe about uh, two or three weeks, you can see the white root coming out from the stem. And then I can put some, put them in the new plot, a new pot. So it's very easy to propagate that. And the potho, I like that. Uh, this is also this is in my house right now. So that's actually, it's a two, parts that's uh, at the top in the one part, uh, another part at the bottom. I always keep that a vine that's uh, always growing in the circle. So that's a uh, very compact that I like that one too. So that's uh, very easy to grow that's uh, the indoors. It's uh, not, uh, uh, can, it's a uh, can tolerance it below light conditions. And those, uh, yeah, that's uh, for the parcel that's very easy to using that the cutting to propagate them. For the hibiscus, so people like that because it's a flowers. So normally people keep those that the hibiscus indoors uh, during the winter and then take that out the, uh, in the spring. But that's I, I just emphasize that. So first, when you take that out, just try to put in a shaded condition or just like the east uh, or maybe morning sun conditions, not a strong light. And then you can, when you take that out, try to prune that back. So that can reduce the size uh, each year. And then when you bring in in the fall, make sure you clean up all this, the leaves because sometimes you will bring a lot of insects indoors. Insects not to just damage the basket and also damage the other house plants. Yeah, that's one, uh, actually, uh, this is someone gave me that one about five, six years ago. That's a very slow growing, it's house plants. I like that because it's a the very colorful foliage, turning yellow and the reddish. And then first coming out normally, if you look at the uh, top, you can see that's the uh, green. And then if you change the light, maybe close to the window, they is showing that's the different uh, colors. I like this kind of the plants and they grow very slow. It's a six years. Right now it's only maybe about 20 inches tall. If you feel that's a too tall, you can cut the top off because the lower parts, they can grow out a lot of branches. Uh, snake plants, I want to mention just one. That's a ton, don't try to water it too much. It, uh, because this is a very common problem. Mm, excess water can kill this plant. Lucky bamboo, I like it. Mm, it's not my plant, but I have two plants in my house. So that's very easy to take care. So that means because it's a bamboo, you can grow in water. So if you mm, take the vacation, maybe two or three weeks or even a month, you don't need to concern too much about that. 
So you don't need to water that mm, often because they grow in, in the water. It's a very uh, easy grow. Uh, it's a lucky bamboo. And for the wax plant, I have two plants on the left picture. So actually, there's a two different species. Uh, these are large leaves you can see at the uh, top. And then the bottom, you will see small leaves. So these are two different uh, species. These are the first small leaves ones, they grow very slow. So that means you don't need to repot that. So maybe five years or six years, you don't need to repot that. So they can last a long time because they can uh, grow very slow. And also that's like the vine type. If the, you, you feel that's a tool big, you can just turn around. So that's a put in, uh, put in the small stick, maybe two or three sticks and then turn around. And then they can come out flowers. But there's a one thing I need to mention that like after finish blooming, actually this is spurs can re-bloom. So that means after bloom, don't try to cut that the flower stems out. Just leave that alone and then they may re-bloom. That's the one point I want to mention. Uh, this one already I mentioned that the spider plants, that's very easy to grow. People like that to put in the kitchen or maybe in the bookshelf. So that's a very nice looking, that's a, just for green leaves. Um, cactus, that's a Christmas cactus. So this is my plant. So normally they bloom that's during the winter time, maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas, but sometimes maybe they can bloom twice. Actually that's part on the, at the top. Actually that's, this plant already bloomed in, uh, during the Thanksgiving. Right now, actually I took picture yesterday. This is start to bloom again, but not too many flower uh, buds so coming out. So this kind of the, Christmas cactus. So you need to water that, but don't try to water too much. If you water too much, that can get that root rot. That's a very easy to propagate. It's just like a button picture, just to pick up some leaves and put in the potting mix. They can come out a new plant. It's a very easy to propagate. Uh, aloe, so that's another, uh, like the succulent plant. So that's very easy to grow. And the bottom picture, so you can see that's a small babies coming out from the base. It's a very easy to uh, separate that one from other plants. And then you can put in a new plant doing the, the propagation. Because they can tolerate, in this uh, aloe, they, they can tolerate very dry conditions. Don't try to water that too often. And this plant, so that's a fairy wash uh, bulb. So that's one that is also that's the, I have that one from the gift. Actually, that's about six years I kept, the, I have been kept that one. So that's also, that's a very slow growing and the very colorful, variegated leaves. And also that I want to mention that uh, this is blooming, not very colorful because it's a very small flowers and the bell shape. But after blooming, you can see that the stalk coming out after finish blooming. Sometimes in the middle, they can grow out in babies. You can see that at the top, you can see two babies coming out. It's a very nice looking and also good structure. I like that kind of plant. It's an English ivy, it's very easy to propagate. This is the one I try to propagate that one. On the right bottom, I just cut the small stems out and then put in the water. So about two weeks. So you can see the white roots coming out. And then when you see that, just put that small stems in the new potting mix, you can get a new plant. That's a very easy to propagate. And also at the top, actually this is my hanging basket too. So I normally keep that outdoors during the season and then take that in during the winter time, enjoy that. And the day plant, it's very easy to grow, but mm, don't overwater that. And they're easy to propagate. So this is my plant too. This is variegated leaves. So there's a green and the yellow leaves. So you can see at in that bottom of the plant, bottom of the plant, you, were, you can see a lot of the babies. Also, actually this is because a lot of leaves falling on the soil, they grow out new roots. 
coming out. For the orchid, it's very difficult. People always mention that it's hard to get the flowers. I think that's a very important part. So you need to get the healthy roots. Secondly, you need to fertilize that. So, and then they can bloom maybe once a year or maybe once in two years. So normally we use that the bark, uh, like the pine barks. So you can see at the bottom three pictures, how you can plant that using the pine, pine barks uh, put in there and then using the two layer pods. Uh, so that means if you want that's a good, like the uh, appearance, that's like on the top picture. So you can see like the small, that's a basket, but inside you need to put in the pot, not to directly put in the basket. It's other way, it's very uh, difficult to water that. Okay, I think that's my last slide. Actually, this is my hanging basket too. I'm uh, not a hanging basket. Actually, this is my annual plant in my garden. I normally dig out in the fall and uh, put in the pot and then keep in my office. And also you can enjoy the flowers during the winter time. So I think this is my last slide. So if you, I think I, I have a few minutes, <laughs> questions. I will stop sharing. Okay. Okay, so we do have questions in the chat. So I'm just gonna go from the top down. So Catherine wants to know, when you have plants outside during the season and bring them in for the winter, how do you avoid bringing bugs in? I have a few squatter centipedes and some ferns that came in this way. Also to follow up, how do you get rid of them before they're inside or once they are inside? Yeah, that's the first, I think that you need to clean up all that's the damaged leaves and the, then yellowing leaves, brown leaves. And then after you clean that up and then give a very good wash or shower. Okay. So that's the upper and the lower surface because this is insect issues, it's a big problem. That's the people always uh, call us problems because it's insect problems people bring in. And, all, and also like the insect side of soap, it's also yep. help after washing it. Okay, all right. Um, and then, okay, so let's see. Another question is, I love ferns. I keep buying them and they keep dying on me. I think I'm doing all the right things without success. I need some tips. Yeah, that's the first I think that you need to check that's a water. I think it might be the too much water. <laughs> Isn't that always the case for everything? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> my guess. <laughs> it, actually, not too many disease problems on ferns. So okay. that's uh, like the two wet feet. That's uh, sometimes when you buy that's a hanging basket, they have two layers at the bottom. So even no water running out, but they kept maybe about a half inches, um, like the surf uh, area. They keep water in there. So that's sometimes very wet. Okay. All right. So it's basically, it's just like soggy feet yes. all the time. Okay. So then there's another question. Okay. Is it still common practice to put rocks on the bottom of a pot without drainage holes? Uh, yeah, this is the old fashioned, but I don't suggest do that. Okay. Yeah, the people always asking if I can put some screens at the bottom or put some like the papers and the draining hole. No, just let the water that's uh, drain out that's uh, normally. Okay, so just make sure your pot has a drainage hole. Yes, that's oh. the important part, yeah. Yep. Um, how do you propagate bamboo? Yeah, this is a very difficult. So sometimes if, even you've cut, put the small cuttings uh, in the water, it's hard to get that out the roots and the shoots. But if you want to try, just make sure you have four, five nodes on the cuttings, not just the two nodes. So that means the two nodes, it's hard to get the one node come out the roots, another uh, node coming out the shoots. So that means if you keep maybe three, four, five notes, maybe two notes get the roots out, and then the upper part, they get the shoot. 
Okay. But sometimes it's very difficult to propagate that. It gets oh. always gets rot. Oh, that's that's disheartening. Yeah. Okay. Um, my aloe plant doesn't have deep roots. It just sits on the top of the soil. Is that okay? I think it might be the small baby. Just like my, I have one small aloe, but maybe already five months. They grow very slow. So okay. because of, especially when you get that small baby from your friend, actually that's one that I got that's from my friend. It's very slow growing, but don't try to water that too much. Just keep that as dry. And then they try to come out in new roots a lot. Yep. Um, <clears throat> can you water orchids with three ice cubes each week? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a not that's a very commonly recommended. So, but I normally just water that. So I just because I have orchid the two lay two parts, one inside that's a plastic. And then outside that's a ceramic part. So look nice. I just take this out and then put it in the sink and just soak it to the pine bark and then take that back. And this can last maybe about um, a week. Uh, sometimes I just uh, using the small water uh, spray bottle, mm -hmm. just a spray on the top. And then you can just moist that's a pine bark. That's mm -hmm. enough for the root growth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, how often should you water a spider plant? Yeah, this is not very sensitive to the dry, uh, dry and the uh, wet. So this means mm, that's very easy to handle that, but mm, try to avoid that uh, too much water. I think the too dry condition, you can tell. So if, when the leaves are drooping and you can yeah. tell, but if there's too much water, sometimes that's hard. And yeah. also you cannot get that some, get them back. So that's yeah. a problem. Uh, if you water over water a plant um, to the point where you're like worried that you're gonna introduce root rot, should you just try repotting it in dry soil or is that too much shock? Yeah, this will depend on how much. So if you catch that up early stage, so that means that just one third of the roots get rot you can just take the root out and then use a small uh, pruner, try to prune that all that the root, the root out mm -hmm. and then repot that. Okay. But if you see that the over half of the roots all brown and the rot, that's the, too late. Oh, okay, time to get a new plant. Yes. All right, can you talk about rattlesnake plants? Uh, I don't know too much about that one. <laughs> I'm not familiar with them either. Sue, do you have any information about that? Yeah, just um, make sure I'm mute to that. I, I yeah. have one that was given to me, but it has done extremely poorly. I did uh, find out that they do need um, a lot of humidity so oh. and, and low light. So I moved it to my bathroom to, and so with the showers and stuff, it does get more humidity and it did get one new leaf, but the other leaves are all very nasty looking. Uh, if, if you want, I can go get it real quick. Yes, sure. uh, I don't know if you had time. Yeah, just get it might be the root problem, but this is a hope because you saw there's a new leaves coming out. That's the hope. Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. She's just getting a whole new plant coming from that one leaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually my house plant in my house and also in my office, most of them just rescued from customer brought in. <laughs> <laughs> I try to do some surgical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and well, they keep them. Okay. Um, can you see it? Yeah, a little, bit, little bit dark, yeah. Uh, it, um, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. leaf. This is the new leaf yes. here. It's a beautiful leaf and the, un the underside is like a burgundy color, mm -hmm. purple color, and the front is like that. Mm -hmm. And this is a new leaf, so it's doing okay, but all the others are really, whoo, are really, really bad. 
uh, what's that bad means? Bad you means that's a browning or drying? It's it's all uh, the tip is browning and and the edges are all browning. Okay, so that's a new plant you got, or how how many years have you? Oh, I've had, had it this? about a year. About a year. Yeah, maybe you can try this. So if that's a new plant, maybe just like I mentioned, just try to wash that salt out. Just put in the sink, the okay. kitchen sink, and then slowly running water, and then wash wash out the salt. And then okay. after that, don't try to water it too much. Like the little like the yes. snake, common snake plants that don't like the ex, uh, accessible water. Okay, should I cut off all the leaves that are bad? I think they look like all the leaves look like okay for me. I don't know. This is a bad looking, but I didn't see too. No. If that's an, if that's a, just a tip of browning, uh, that's okay. You can cut that part off, just a tip off, not the whole leaves okay. off. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. And that's it for questions so far. Uh, if anyone else has one, jump in. Otherwise, oh. Oh. Okay, just getting a lot of thank yous at this point. Okay, that's good. So anytime, just a call us. And then if you visit our website, you can find my email address, my phone Ooh. number. Yep. So yeah, I was waiting to serve you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe you'll end up with some few extra plants. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but but most of house plants from nurseries. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you. Everybody have a good night. We'll good see night. you later. Bye. Bye.